Uh, last month, I also worked through a lot of the other uh, earmarks that we were able to secure. So you can feel free to look that up. That information is available on our website. Um, but this was the main climate related one. We also were able to secure $3 million to build out a new OBGYN unit at Elmhurst Hospital and address our maternal mortality crisis, as well as $800,000 at Jacoby Hospital for a violence interruption program that we have already seen to reduce reoccurrence of uh, incidents of violence and crime by over 50 percent. It's already proven to be more effective than any policing intervention that we have in the books at reducing crime and reducing incidents of violence. We're really excited about that. Um, now, in addition to the Green New Deal project that we secured right here at home, we also worked with a lot of other members of Congress as well to see if we could launch Green New Deal projects across the United States and use this as a conduit to help do that. And we're gonna make the big announcement next week, but I'm giving you guys this scoop right here since this is our town hall. We've identified 79 Green New Deal projects across the United States will be starting this year and in the next year. So we're really, really excited. Um, the mic needs to go on the stand. Pardon? The mic needs to go on the stand. Now the, now the mic needs to go on the stand. I'm getting, I'm getting more regulations by the minute here. Okay. So, um, so I'm really, really, ex we're really excited about this. And I believe that it's really just a testament to when people say that we can't watch us work, watch us work. What they're saying is that we can't do it the traditional way. You know, maybe, oh, can you get 218 votes on the House floor on this specific uh, resolution? If they, they may say we can't do that, it doesn't mean that we can't do the thing, period. And so we're going to find creative ways and alternatives to make sure that we can get this done. And that's really uh, what we're really excited about and, and being able to accomplish today. So we've got that going on um, in terms of environmental justice for Astoria. Now I want us to kind of zoom back down to the micro. We know the, the big goals that we have. We have to draw down emissions. We have to address this in a way that's going to create millions of jobs and not just any jobs, but good jobs, union jobs, prevailing wage jobs that have health care and, and uh, actual benefits. And so we want to make sure that, it's, that we're drawing down, we're meeting the scientific goals, we're decarbonizing, we're creating millions of jobs, and we're addressing environmental injustice in our communities. Because when there's a plant that needs to put in that's going to have a lot of emissions, that's going to give people, uh, put people at risk of higher rates of, um, of cancer or of asthma, it's almost always working class communities poor communities and black and brown communities that get the short shrift. And we have to make sure that we push back against that. So we had that win out in the Bronx. And then the way, what this means right here in Astoria is that we were able to take on one of the biggest uh, fossil fuel companies in the United States, NRG. And they were trying to open another peaker plant right here in Astoria. Now what peaker plants are is that what, what they claim them to be is that they exist and they're not supposed to really be online except for times of peak activity. So in times where uh, this, it's summer, everyone's got their AC on and there's like this excess demand, they build these peaker plants to burn fossil fuels to increase that energy production and meet that demand. We do not need to be building peaker plants in Astoria. We need to be building solar panels. We need to be building wind turbines. We need to be investing in hydropower in order to meet our energy needs, which, by the way, is cheaper because we are getting killed by Con Ed out here. We're getting killed. And every time, every time that they say, thank you, <laughs> every time that, um, that they say that they want to build a peaker plant, or every time you hear Con Ed or a, com or a fossil fuel company say, we're going to build these things to help you, what, what they're actually doing in proposing these fossil fuel projects is that they're trying to trap us in dependency on an en energy source that is only going to get more expensive. It's only going to get more expensive. No matter what we do here, that is just the science of the issue. You know, we can try, we've got, and 
you know, we've got people like we're, you have the president that's releasing the strategic reserve, all this other stuff. Even if you invest all this money in doing everything Republicans want, build out all the, the, the you know, build out new fossil fuel pipelines, increase production, fossil fuel infrastructure is only going to get more expensive because it is not a sustainable supply of energy, period. There's, it, there's not enough. And it's, all, it's finite and it's only going to be less. And so it's only going to get more expensive. So what we need to be doing is making investments in cultivating infinite sources of energy, the sun, wind, hydropower, geothermal, et cetera, because that will only get cheaper. Solar, wind, uh, you know, renewable resources will only get cheaper over time. And so what, our, what we need to be doing is, is really helping people understand that these transitions are not going to only make us safer, not only are they going to protect our planet, but they're going to protect our pocket. Because this is a huge issue that is just crushing uh, working families in our community. And the fact of the matter is, is that electric does not have to be more expensive. Right now, for example, one of the things that we had is, and this was one of the reasons why um, I objected so much to the separation of the bipartisan infrastructure plan from the Build Back Better Act. Because in passing, because they were really designed to be puzzle pieces, and when you only design one of the puzzle pieces and you don't pass the other, we're missing the whole picture. So what happened with the bipartisan infrastructure bill is that we did get some critical investments in EV charging infrastructure, for example. Um, there's a lot of money in there to build EV chargers. Except, how are you going to use an EV charger if you can't afford an EV car, an electric car? Build Back Better had up to $12,000 in subsidies um, to basically pay you to buy an electric car so that you can then use that EV charging infrastructure so that your electric vehicle will be cheaper. Um, and we also want to expand that not just for them to be cars, but that for them to be electric uh, bikes and other sor sorts of electric infrastructure, electrified infrastructure, so that you can actually use uh, the infrastructure that's being built. Because what we're seeing right now is that when you just buy the chargers and keep the cars expensive, then electric infrastructure is only being built in wealthier areas. They, they are building the chargers around people, around places where people can only afford EVs. So it's kind of like, you know, when you're wealthy, you end up saving a lot more money because that's been designed around you. So now wealthier communities are getting those solar investments and we're getting stuck with dirty oil, gas, and coal. But we're not gonna allow that to happen. So when NRG announced that they were going to roll out uh, a peaker plan, we said, Hell no. And we partnered and worked with you all because the community were, were, were the ones that first saw this and sounded the alarm and started to organize. And we worked uh, with Assembly Member Zohar Mamdani, Senator Janaris, who was just here, myself, along with climate and environmental activists and energy activists throughout Astoria. And we were able to successfully shut down uh, the peaker plant right here in Astoria, Queens. And we're really excited about that because in addition to, it's not just about what we're taking away, but it's about the investments that we put in. So the shutdown of that peaker plant was paired with our earmark to build out offshore wind and give jobs to our community in order to make that solution happen. So we're really